I'm Ungazi, and you're welcome back to the ZB Show. It's an absolute honor to have you on the show. I know I always say this, but you have no idea how honored I feel when people actually take time to listen to me and, you know, hopefully learn a thing or two. I, it makes me feel amazing. So, anyways, I'd just like to say a huge thank you to everyone who tuned in last week as well as everyone who, you know, downloaded or listened later on any of the platforms, Spreaker, SoundCloud, YouTube, for shared, we're very grateful. Uh, I just want to remind you that um, for people who use their smartphones and are worried about the data plans, you can always try to download off for shared because that's a smaller size file. So it's never more than 20 MB, which you can download um, in less than a minute or tops two minutes, you know, depending on your ISB. So it's just 20 MB and it wouldn't take any time. So it's fine. You can do that just so you don't get left out. And then, you know, you still have access to everything everyone else does. I mean, uh, this is the eighth episode of the show. And I just want to say that the response has been amazing. Um, On Spreaker, we've got 483, is it? Unique views of the shows, of the seven episodes so far. We've got 483, I think. We're just using the speaker as the major um, form for uh, tracking the traffic we're getting. And then we're also using YouTube as well. Uh, YouTube, we've got a lot of views as well spread across all the shows. So, I mean, I just want to say thank you because it's just been under two months and the fan base is growing. You know, it's, I feel blessed. I feel really, really blessed. I've checked our numbers. We have a lot of listeners from Nigeria, but we've got more in diaspora. So I think it's a good idea. Nigeria, catch up. We need to catch up. (laughs) Yes. Um, Last week's show, I'll do a brief recap. We spoke about the Nigerian New Year and, you know, all the special gifts we get. I got some very interesting responses and in response to the anti-gay bill a lot of people seem to think it's the right decision to make you know they say oh you know where it's on african and all that i'll try not to talk about that because you know it could just go on and on and on and we're preparing a show for that everything is set we've got the lawyers we've got you know some people with very interesting perspectives but because everyone is so busy, it's a bit hard to get everyone together at the same time. We're working on making sure we can get that to you as quickly as possible. And I got three messages from people asking to know why I did talk about the season of letters in last week's episode. <laughs> I understand it's been a season of letters and the letters just keep coming and coming and coming. The reason I didn't want to speak about those letters is because we're not too sure if those um, letters are genuine, are we? Because, you know, there was the whole scandal with um, the Obasanjo's daughter, Ayabo, saying she didn't send any letter. We don't know what's going on with the letters. So till we can get some concrete evidence, until I actually have the time to read through all these letters, then I can properly address the issue. Um, but you know what? Yes, when I was you know, reading, you know, brief recaps. I saw um, a scanned copy, like the first or the last page of President, former President Obasanjo's letter. And all I kept thinking to myself was, yay, I've got Obasanjo's email address. <laughs> I mean, well, you know, so that just, you know, cast some doubts. But, you know, we'll still wait. And hopefully, if I can get the time to read through all these letters, you know, Pres- former president's letter to current president, current president's response to former president, um, president, um, former president's letter to the PDP about the, you know, that person, I can't remember his name, that's allegedly a wanted criminal in the US, and then that person's response to former president, and then former president's daughter's letter to him. It's just like really a season of letters. <laughs> And, you know, Nigerians are very hardworking ent- entrepreneurs, yes. Uh, my friend came from Abuja and she was telling me, you know what, like on the streets right now, they're selling the letters, like, get your season of open letters, get your season of open letters. And I'm thinking, wow, you know, anything to survive, you know, man must work. 
Abby? Yes. Um, so let's get on to today's show. Today's show is entitled Western Influences on Nigerian Social Behavior. Um, undoubtedly, we are hugely influenced by the West. Um, a lot of us travel. Um, a lot of us, you know, depend on other means to get information, like through the internet. And of course, a lot of people watch TV, watch the news, you know. So it's the world is getting smaller than it was because probably when I was younger, some people had probably never even heard of some countries, but right now everyone sort of knows everywhere, sort of has an idea of what is going on. All um, thanks to, you know, media, the internet, televisions, radios. Yes, radios and things like that. So it's a good thing. The world is getting smaller. There's more access to information, but that doesn't necessarily mean the world is getting better. You know, people are just getting more aware. And because we're getting more aware, it's a positive. But then in some countries, you find that people are being stifled, like um, information is being restricted. It's funny how when I'm in, when I'm not in Nigeria, I can, hear information faster than when I'm in Nigeria. When I'm not in Nigeria, I hear things and I call someone and I send a message and they're like, really, I didn't know about that. And then they start asking and that's when, you know, it's common knowledge. Same thing happens to me. I'm in Nigeria right now, but, you know, sometimes someone is going to call me or send me a message and say, what's going on in Nigeria? This, 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 and I haven't heard of it. So, you know, sometimes there's um, a bit of a problem with uh, information flow. But we'll examine that in future episodes. So right now we're talking about Western influences on Nigerian social behavior. Um, if we're going to talk about, you know, Western influences, it would be a good idea to start from traveling. Because I think that's where majority of us, um, okay, I'm not going to say majority, that's a wrong phrase because a lot of people in Nigeria cannot even afford to travel. You know, they can't even afford to travel within Nigeria. So, yeah, traveling outside Nigeria might be a bit of a luxury for some Nigerians. But there's access to television. There's access to newspapers. There's access to, well, you know, the regular kind of um, socialization our great-grandparents did. You know, they sat down in the halls in the village and they discussed and exchanged the information over drinks, you know. So that's also a source for with regards to Western influence, yeah, we can start with talking about social media. Um, social media is, I think, one of the fastest growing areas. A lot of um, a lot of companies are turning to social media to market to interact with the customers one on one. A lot of celebrities are using social media to you know speak to the fans directly. Uh, social media to me, I think is everything. Some years ago, you know, when you were doing your advertising for your business or your website, there was, um, you know, people recommend using SEO to generate hits and things like that, which is good. But I feel like right now, social media marketing or whichever way would you choose to call it is probably the most effective. The social media, and when I'm talking about social media specifically, I'm going to talk about Twitter and Facebook. And of course, there's Pinterest, um, Blogger, things like that. But in Nigeria, I think Twitter and Facebook are, you know, like very popular right now. Probably a lot more popular than um, Pinterest or Instagram. So um, on social media, we find that um, things have changed quite a lot. A few years ago in Nigeria, if you wore a skirt as a lady, if you wore a skirt that was above your knee, people looked at you weird. And thought, oh, that person is corrupt or she's up to no good. Maybe if you had a bandana tied one way, people looked at you and said, mm, that person is suspicious, you know. But it seems to me like things have actually changed quite a lot. Because if you go on Twitter and Facebook, you know, it's very normal to find people put um, sort of explicit pictures of themselves and talk about, I'm not even going to um, lie about it, but sometimes I'm amazed at some of the language and some of the content I see from Nigerians because I'm thinking, wow, that's a bit too vulgar or that's a bit too much information. But it seems to me like people are sort of different on social media than they, you know, truly are. Let's say someone's name is um Angela. So there's a social media Angela and then there's the real life Angela. And sometimes both versions of Angela are definitely not comparable to each other. You know, we see a lot of people, you know, take picture of, pictures of expensive cars and things like that. 
and they put them on there. I think it's symbolic or representative of what we see the Western celebrities do. In the case of the Western celebrities, though, a lot of those things are not actually paid for by them. Sometimes the company offers those things to them, you know, as incentives. Okay, you know what? Sweet about it. And then you can keep it and you get paid for it. So I think the difference is sometimes in this part of the world, we don't have a lot of companies that are willing to do that because, you know, it's still growing economy is still a bit shaky there's still not that level of competence and trust in companies so you find very few companies who would be willing to give someone a lamborghini you know to say okay you know what drive that and just say it's from us you know so i think a lot of people spend more than they actually would because they're trying to live up to this whole western thing um let's take a break now and when we come back we'll explore more of these don't go away Every man get your own caro, but me own caro na me own caro. Eh, Maria, I love you, baby. You don't know. Come on. Welcome back to the show. And that was another beautiful song from Nigerian artist Como. You can find him on Twitter at Como Blastic. That's K-O-M-O-B-L-A-S-D-I-C-K-1. Como Blastic 1. All right, let's get back to the topic now. Let's talk about relationships and family. You know, the Western influence on relationships and family. Um, In Western countries, it's normal to have a vacation every once in a year. You know, some parents actually even take their kids out of school just to go on that annual vacation. It's like family time for everyone to get together and bond. I think it's a really good idea because everyone deserves a break. Everyone deserves a holiday and everyone deserves to be around the people they love. So it's a very good idea. Um, move back years ago in Nigeria. I don't think this was popular. Very few families could, you know, actually travel together it wasn't you know just all about the money and while the fact remains that some people cannot afford it in nigeria most people looked forward to you know traveling to the villages to be with their families at the end of the year so everyone looked forward to it but with you know western influence coming in people can now see that you know you can actually have a vacation with your family outside nigeria or you know a nice spot for tourists you know just something to get together so a lot of families are now actually choosing to spend their holidays outside Nigeria with their families. Now, I understand Nigeria can be a very stressful place to live. Uh, like t Max said on the show, living in Nigeria might take a few years off his life. <laughs> Whenever I think of that, it, get, you know, it cracks me up. But so because in Nigeria now we can see that it's normal and it's probably not for those who can afford it, it's probably not as expensive as they would have thought. So a lot of people do that now. Dubai seems to be a very popular destination. Um, it was crazy because like this past Christmas, almost everyone was going to Dubai with their families. And I'm like, okay, what's going on in Dubai? Are they like having like um, a buy one family holiday pack and get one free or something? Because everyone was traveling, you know. 
and I thought about it, it's a hassle-free place to go to. You don't need, you know, um, obviously, if you're going to some other countries, maybe you want to go to the UK, or you want to go to Canada, or you want to go to US. I mean, I do, these are not exactly touristy countries anyways, but they're nice places to go to. So I think there's a lot of hassle involved with getting visas and, you know, um, accommodation and things like that. It could be very expensive. So, you know, Dubai is a nice place and it's very convenient. It's not as expensive and it's just, you know, an amazing time for the family. So I think, you know, that is definitely a positive on Western influence because, it gives these parents and children a very nice time to bond together. You know, people get closer, people do things. I love it. I actually love it. Sports and in particular football. Okay, sometimes I really want to watch the game, but I'm either stuck doing something or just I don't have the time. I'm not home. I can't see in front of the TV for too long. So basically, a lot of the time, I actually catch up on Twitter or, you know, Facebook. And I guess a lot of people do that. I call it watching football from Twitter. <laughs> so um it goes back to social media as well. Uh, you know, and also people are now so interested in the, you know, leagues, you know, like the Premiership or the Copas, the one from South America or, you know, La Liga. It's something that people now have access to. You can actually watch them online. There's a website I use, but I don't know if it's legal, so I'm not going to call the name of that website. <laughs> but yes, yeah, so it's, you know, Western influence. If people have shown that sports are very good, and especially in a developing country like Nigeria, where you've got, you know, youth restiveness and, um, you know, high rate of unemployment and um, a large number of unskilled individuals, which could be a recipe for disaster. I think sports is one of those things that can actually help you know, get people uh, engaged in local leagues, not just football, but the different sports people do. So I think, you know, that's a good idea. Have little things like that, even if you're organizing a little cup for children in primary school or something. It's always something that, you know, people would look forward to. I think it's a great idea. So that's also a positive in my opinion. We can turn around, like everything Western, um, a lot of us get the impression that everything that's Western influence has to be detrimental to African values. I don't believe that is the case. I believe we have a lot to learn from each other. Um, if you go to London now, even kids these days are now calling people older than them auntie and uncle. Years ago, this was not the case. You know, everyone called everyone by their first names or Mr. Something or Mrs. Something, but it was mostly never uncle or auntie so it's a huge part of globalization like the west is also learning from us we've got you know a lot of families that are not originally from the uk coming from other areas of the world to settle and there's such a huge mix now so i think to a certain extent that is a positive for them as well so they're learning from us and we're learning from them not everything western is bad just like not everything african is good you know, some things can be done away with and some things can be improved on and some things can be left the way they are. But the thing is, we're getting integrated. The world's getting smaller. It's a good idea for us all to come together and learn from each other. So I think sports is something that should, you know, really, really be taken seriously in Nigeria because it can actually help curb a lot of the crime rates in Nigeria, help curb, you know, restiveness, unemployment, because I feel like when people are gainfully employed, people have a skill, there's no need for them to go out and commit a crime. Um, let's talk about reality TV now. Reality TV has grown quite a lot. Um, Big Brother in Africa is probably the most famous reality TV show on the continent. Um, it's funny because in some other countries, everyone is tired of Big Brother. It's like it's outlived its usefulness and its cycle. Um, you know, it started in the Netherlands and it was axed many years ago because people could not, like, they said, what kind of weird program is this? It's not doing anything and it was axed. Even in the UK, it was axed after a while, but then it was revived, but it still hasn't got, um, lived up to that previous hype. But in Africa, it's a huge deal now because, I mean, Big Brother Africa is more, I think it's more cultural than social. So it's a platform where everyone, I mean, you meet people from, 
12 different countries you learn different things i think it's a good experience um remember we had melvin odwa on the third episode of the show melvin was um a finalist on the big brother show that concluded last year and he's a very amazing young man and he's involved with charity work right now in africa focusing on energy poverty so you know when i had him on the show it was amazing trying to him because I was amazed at what, you know, I had learned from the show. I had no idea I was living in something called energy poverty, you know, until we started talking about it. And then I realized, you know what, there's a lot of good in that. So, you know, we've picked up the big brother. Yes, yeah, some people um you're saying things some people might do, which we're not comfortable with. There are age restrictions. And if you're not comfortable with something, it's your choice to say, you know what, I'm not watching this. And a lot of the time I've done that. When I see something I'm not particularly comfortable with, it's easy for me to flip my channel. So we can always, like I said, there's always a positive, there's a negative. It's always a good idea for us to see what we can get from the positive. I never would have believed I would have learned so much about the one campaign's work in Africa if I hadn't actually seen that part of Big Brother. So it's, you know, it's a really good feeling to know that even reality TV is helping, um, helping to expand our horizons, teaching us to think and see. So it's, you know, Western influence positively as well. And then there's also the issue of being open-minded. It takes us back to things like um, public display of affection, popularly called PDA. <laughs> and of course, you know, with the gay things and there's a lot more like dressing. Um, I remember my friend and I were out and I was just wondering like years ago, we probably wouldn't have been the way we were on the streets in Nigeria because maybe people would have been like what well, we might have gotten mobbed or something so I really like that people are now being open-minded people are no longer harassed then let's talk about cyber crime cyber crime is unfortunately something that a lot of Nigerians have been tainted with and when I mean tainted it doesn't mean all Nigerians are criminals definitely not it's a very small population of people who are doing these things but for some reason a lot of people choose to say, oh, Nigerians, you know, when I go online and then I see comments non-Nigerians make, I'm like, oh, I'm a Nigerian prince and, you know, try to, you know, take the mickey. I feel bad because it's typical human behavior to stereotype people, but you cannot stereotype a country of about 140 million people just because of what you've read about maybe 200 or 500. You know, that is totally unfair. So whenever people talk about the nigerian scam i get very defensive i remember years ago i was in um where was that where was that? i think it was siren sesta and i was speaking to an oibo man called rob and we're chatting and you know i tell him i'm from nigeria and then he goes oh and then he starts talking about nigerian scams and i said to him rob that's very offensive do not speak to me about um nigerian scams because at the end of the day only a stupid person would fall for that you know, if someone says, oh, I'm going to give you a hundred million from someone, you know, someone sends an email saying, oh, I'm the former president, blah, blah, blah. I've got 200 million. If you give me your name and account details, I'll get the lawyer to contact you and give you a hundred million. As far as I'm concerned, you're a criminal as well, because you know, that's dodgy money and you're still trying to get it. Of course, you know, when it comes to catfishing and, you know, stealing people's details, that's totally wrong because that's done without people's permission. But for the people that actually want to get a cut of the money and then they get conned, I have no mercy for such people. I have no mercy for such people because at the end of the day, you were trying to steal. You didn't work for it. Manna doesn't fall from heaven. It did in the Bible in those days. But that was like 2 million or sorry, 2000 years ago. It's not going to happen anymore. So yeah, we've seen a rise in cybercrime, um, identity theft still linked to social media and uh, then you know sometimes people go on chat rooms fall in love and take advantage and then they get taken advantage of and that's catfishing in fact there was a very popular case of catfishing that happened on nigerian twitter i think it was late last year some person called <laughs> royal amebo who claimed to be a person called ifeolua you know she actually got into a Twitter romance with someone. She claimed she had a kidney problem. Someone on Twitter was even willing to donate a kidney to her. And it's, <laughs> I know it sounds ridiculous, but one of, uh, you know, it was just a whole messy situation. I'm laughing because it sounds ridiculous. Like, how do you donate a kidney to someone you've never met? Someone you've never really spoken to on the phone or Skyped with, you know? Um... And then apparently some people sent loads of money to her as well for her treatment. So 
that was sad. And then Real Abebo died. <laughs> you know what? If you want to follow this catfishing story, it's very funny. You can just find her handle. It's at Royal Amebo. That's R O Y A L A M E B O. I don't know who the person, you know, there have been some fingers pointed at some same people, but I don't know who that Royal Amebo person is, but whoever was fronting that character, though, that person is a genius and does not need to use his knowledge for evil. Trust me. Let's take a break and we'll be right back. So, more music from Mokoro. Don't go away. This is serious and I am playing. I want you in my life, that's what I'm saying. I want you for my wife with no delaying. Look into my eyes, girl, I ain't lying. I'll be there for you every day. Satisfy you in every way. And no matter what they say, me and you are here to stay. Together, forever, whatever. Welcome back to the show. Um, let's talk about Western influence on Nigerian celebrity behavior or celebrity culture. I feel like this is one area where Western influence has had a negative effect on Nigeria. Yes. Um, I know a lot of us have heard of that channel on DSTV called E. I absolutely think I hold that channel responsible for a lot of the weird, sometimes not so normal behavior that we see from Nigerian um, entertainers or celebrities or, you know, people in the limelight, basically. Um, I just feel it's a bit fake. It's not real. Like, a lot of people live very fake lives in Nigeria. And I truly believe it's because they're trying to live up to the idea of what the Hollywood counterparts or Western counterparts, you know, do. Like I said, not everything Western is bad and not everything African is good. Some can be rejected, some can be modified, and some can be left the way they are. I think celebrity culture has a huge negative effect um, because, you see, you know, a lot of stars now, you know, bragging about how much money they have, how much they can spend. I mean, it's okay for you to do that. At the end of the day, you're probably working hard for your money. But you need to understand the society you live in. Security is a huge problem. If you go on social media or you, you know, whichever platform you use and you talk about how much money you've got, how you've got watches, what, $200,000 or you spent $100,000 on a purse, things like that. To me, that is an open invitation telling men of the underworld, oh, yeah, come, I get. That's what I think it is. You know, in advanced countries where, you know, you know, if you feel like you're threatened, a phone call, okay, Especially when you're a celebrity, a phone call. Okay, something. Yeah, you might have the police in a few minutes try to come and see what's wrong. But when you're in Nigeria, where the security situation is so bad, if you offer people an open invitation to come to your house, they'll take it. 
So when you go around saying you've got, you know, that much money or you've got a car that was 20 million naira and then you see a lot of blogs when someone buys a car, they say huge congrats to that person. Are you serious? Like, it's not a big deal. It's just a car. When you talk about how the car is 50 million or $200,000 or, you know, whatever amount it is, people are going to take it the wrong way. Because one, people with, you know, even people that probably would not on a normal day think of, um, doing evil things to whoever that person is but seeing that someone around me i'd be like oh so this person has got this much money i'm living next door and i'm suffering oh yeah men of the underworld come it happens you know um a lot of the time where they're intruders in homes they just don't walk around no it's prior information and who gives out the information the people that know you so when you're saying things about yourself about how much you have and how much you spend on a bag or a shoe, it's an open invitation and they will take it. Then I feel like um a lot of the Nigerian celebrities, I understand that we're only human and, you know, it's okay for us to get angry sometimes. Like Patrick Sufo said, you know, when he was on the show, I'm only human. I get angry like anyone else. But I believe when you're in that position where people potentially look up to you, there should be some form of restraints and maturity about the way you handle certain situations. Like cussing when, you know, one person says something to you that is not exactly right, but cussing and being mean and using vulgar words and getting all aggressive. I think that is wrong. It's not the signs of being a good role model. Fact is, when you're in the public eye, people are going to like you same way people are not going to like you so when you put yourself in the limelight you need to expect that you know so some of the responses i see i mean it's just a bit wrong i feel like it's out of order you know you can address situations without getting overly rude or aggressive or vulgar that's just what i think you you know I'm going to talk about the red carpets in Nigeria and the poses. Everyone does the hand on the hips, one leg in front, pow. That's the pose. <laughs> it's a very E pose, if you know what I mean. Um, it's good, you know, but I think it's it gets a bit tiring, you know, the whole red carpet thing. I was at some comedy event in Port Harcourt, and I'm not kidding, there was a red carpet. And when I went there, I was just wearing a regular sundress and a bag, you know, a regular, just regular and flats, pumps. And then when I got there, people were so dressed, I was wondering, are we at the Oscars or something? Is there something, you know, going on? It's just a comedy event. Why is there a red carpet? paparazzi like you know people taking pictures and people posing i thought it was a bit extra for a comedy show but you know that's what is expected so basically if you have an event and you don't have all that people think your event wasn't a success or it was low budget but i think it's slightly ridiculous it's a comedy event you know you don't need all that and then um one good you know with celebrity behavior one positive basically is the charity events like charities in nigeria i think are getting a lot more support now from you know the popular people the celebrities people in the you know in the public eye they're doing a lot for charity and i totally appreciate that that's very good while i don't think you know everything must you know be out there not everything is a photo op but i still think it's you know that's a positive as well um so that's our show on Western influence on Nigerian social behavior. Let's talk about upcoming shows. I am delighted to tell you that an American Grammy Award, Emmy Award winner, he's a rapper and a poet, has agreed to be on the ZB show. Now, I mean, I'm amazed. It's been days, but I'm still in shock because I cannot believe it. You know, this is someone that I listen to his song and I'm like, wow, that verse, it's amazing, you know? So I'm so excited and I cannot wait. Okay, I can't talk about it anymore. I can't give away the surprise just yet, but he's an amazing guy. He's won a Grammy Award. He's won an Emmy. He's won a Peabody. He's won another award. He's just great. 
he's probably one uh, okay i'll stop there <laughs> more hints but we should have that show ready in the next couple of weeks and i'm so excited Good news, the Zibi Show now has a book club. Yay! Yes, so the Zibi Show book club is a meeting for people who love reading, who love books. So we get together, socialize, talk about books, recommend books to each other, you know, all do a general read of a book, review the book, speak about it, and things like that. It's We're not limited to just fiction or non-fiction, no. Poetry is involved, poems are involved, plays are involved, and of course the writing, because I mean, inevitably, if you enjoy reading, there's a chance you're going to want to be a writer. I'm a writer as well, so, you know, it's a chance for everyone, you know, with similar interests to get together on forums, you know, we'll talk about these things. Yeah, for now, it's going to be virtual, like online, but, you you know as the months and the weeks and the days go by we can have regular events you know to meet each other and discuss i also think you know reading is something that we should encourage in children so there's going to be a chance that we can do some charity events together like you know get old books we've read and donate them out to you know children or adults who need books you know just have like a virtual a library where we can give out these books to other people who would benefit from the knowledge i mean i cannot tell you how many books i've got in my home so it's a wonderful opportunity also you know we can just get together do something you know get books for children in a school a less privileged school you know where people can't really afford things like that so i'd really really love it if we could join this um if we could all get together and join it'll make a huge difference and i would be really really glad so the zibi show book club uh, you can find more information about it on the website which is www.thezibishow dot webs dot com and uh, you can check the Facebook page, Facebook dot com forward slash the ZB show. Follow us on Twitter as well. So if you need any more information about the book club, please just send me an email, send me a tweet, get at me and you know it's all going to be sorted. And with regards to the book club, the first book we're treating is Americana by Chimamanda Ngozi Adiche. We've got the same name nice i remember one of my oibo colleagues you know he saw half of a yellow sun in my boss's office and he was so excited because you know we had the same name and i'm like yes ben we've got the same name but she's different i assure you it's not me but i i really look up to chimamanda ngozi because you know she's a writer and she started writing when she was very young as well so she inspires me it would be lovely if you know we can get her on the show so we've come to that point at the end of the show i've got an enlarged tonsils <laughs> i'm suffering a lot from the dust but i'm fine you know why because i believe i have no barriers and no limitations i'll always go out and do what i want to do nothing will keep me down so that's the spirit and thank you so much for being on the show i'll leave you with this one be the change you seek to find in the world. Have a lovely week. Take care of yourselves and each other. Aloha. Yeah.